Here we go with another ironclad run on Slow the Spire. Going for the custom run, um, essentially level 10 uh, draft, same as you did the first time around. This one's uh, pre recorded and comms over the top because I wasn't expecting it to do so well. I just thought I'd record it on the off chance, much like the uh, defect run, I believe. Um, but yeah, just going through the draft here, getting, getting a few strength cards this time, but uh, not many options for block so far, if any. So, not really anything here I want. First block card, gotta take it. Close lines of pseudo block card, making the enemies hit me for less. Uh, Spot weakness, that's be my third, second, I don't know, got a whole bunch of them, got to take power through, flash, let's have a look, yeah two spot weakness, one power through, one goes to the armour, clash is bad, twin strikes is bad, yeah, disarm's good though. So my best defense in the early game is going to be beat up the enemy before they can hit me. Let's see how that plan goes. Let's see what sort of run we've got. We've got two elites up there. We get four. Oh, we're we'll just going for two. Uh, three. And then if I, uh, if I have trouble with that bonfire, I can switch. So just do one elite and get an extra heal. For my options, I'm trying to think, can I kill one? Not sure I can if I use spot weakness and twin strike. Goes the armor to block the other one. Goes the armor is an interesting card. It stays in your deck and gives you ten block for one, which is quite a good rate if you use it. But because it's got ethereal, if you don't use it. It uh, exiles itself from your deck, so it's a very interesting design. So a lot of the other cards with Ethereal have exhaust, so they remove from your deck regardless of whether you use it or not. So it's interesting that one stays in your deck if you use it. I'll take the Iron Wave here, just a. Uh, Block card that works against um, Golden Knob. I think a potion would be a good idea as I don't have anything to block with. This guy's fairly easy, he's got to beat him up fairly quickly because he, uh, he starts off as a buff which gives him strength every turn so he's, he will gradually get out of control. But, uh, Don't let him hang around for too long, he should be fine. Wild Strike's pretty good for that sort of thing. That's a good source of damage. Didn't want the smoke bomb anyway, really. Another Iron Wave. So, picking up some block cards here. Just trying to remember my route. This guy's a fairly standard enemy, does some damage or some damage and block or buffs his strength. Nothing else, so he's going to have that. That's a strength buff he's looking at doing there. Which is good for me because I haven't got any. Well, I have actually got a block card that turn, but not a lot in the deck. Shrug, but also we'll apply everything. Take fire everything because it's uh, uncommon. That is just not as good. Well, I don't think so. I'm not not, not going to paint to the authority in the man. 
as you can see their clash is very difficult to use you've got to use any powers and um, and skills in your, in your hand before you can use it and that's early game late game if you've got any curses or any statuses your enemies like to put in your deck and as it happens I'm putting quite a few in my deck uh, clash just becomes a very difficult to play card this stage of the game it's a case of if you order it correctly you can normally play it but I think I've got to take true grit here Would be nice. Need to block. Just get a little bit of damage out on each of these. As I said before, these these guys alternate between uh, ten damage and put some daisies in your deck. So it's important to kill one of the front or the back one quickly. Back, I'll take them out. If I hit the one in front, I'll take them out because the vulnerability won't really have them. Still, I was in two of them, so it becomes a pretty easy fight. See, I can't play Clash there because the Ascension sends his main, which is. It's, it's not as simply as Bane's fault, it's Clash, it's just a bad card. Shrug now. No point having your block roll over every turn if you don't have any block. So the slime's gonna. Put, I can't remember if he uh, makes me tip, makes me have lower armor or makes me hit for less. There's there's two different colors and they do do, do different things. I think this is the one that makes me hit for less. Yeah, it's the weaker. The weak one. The guy at the back just hits you for a bit. Doesn't do anything interesting. So lots of world strike the front guy. Flash at the back. Considering I've got no block. Been uh, healing quite well. Um, Ironclad seems to do rather well with just smashing things. So he heals for six every fight, which is much more useful than I give it credit for. Sort of forget you have it. Oh, with that, you pick up an offering and then uh, you're using six health a fight, so it negates it. Don't want any of them, I don't think. Smithing, true grit, yeah. So we can target the exhaust mostly. Uh, it's a very good card once you can choose which card you want to get rid of. Because you can get rid of curses with it, you can get rid of all sorts. Um, like the power through statuses, you can just get rid of those. Some money, and then he decides to block, and then the turn after he decides to run. We'll just get him dead. We can want another true grit. Uh, I think I'll upgrade that straight away. I know the, the fire breathing has a really strong upgrade. A few other cards that would benefit from it. I think power through would be rather good, but I don't know. I just. Uh, when True Grit's upgraded, it's very usable. When, when it's not random card in your hand getting exhausted, it's uh, lots of good. Mm, 
the human form for free, but the, the human form gives you uh, plus two strength every turn. So. Just looking here, and if I play the disarm, I can play the clash. But the enemy gains two strength when I play it, but loses two strength, so it's kind of pay one energy to play the clash. Too bad. Quite, yeah, I've got to draw another attack. Oh no, that just does 15. There we go. I forgot to even form some ramp in the strength. Green Barry is a great pick up here. I think I've pretty much got all the block cards I wanted out of Act 1 now. Two Iron Waves, two True Grit, and a Flame Barrier. So it's gone from looking like a very suspect deck to looking fairly reasonable. I managed to get for maximum uh, elites this act as well, so a few relics. Now the more banks will gradually give me money every every floor that I rise. So 296 gold, it's not bad. I think I'm going for a uh, trying to get fire breathing to pop off using wild strikes and stuff to get extra statuses in my deck. So, Lagaboom in once again, he um, sleeps the first three turns, um, and then his rotation is 20 damage, 20 damage. Uh, debuff, 20 damage, 20 damage, debuff. Um, but the debuff just lowers your strength and dexterity by one, so it lowers the damage you deal and the block you gain. So it's kind of a race. Because it'll get to the point where you can't damage him anymore. At the same time, you don't want to be taking too much damage when he's swinging at you. So I should blink through go here, get rid of twin strikes, it's bad. Now he's going to stay us, now I want to go with one attack, and I've drawn a bunch of blocks. So I had to get rid of the spot we just there just to kind of get the density of my deck a little bit higher on threats. So I'm taking an absolute beating from this guy. Down to seven. Up to thirteen. I'm sort of going strength, but I just dislike Heavy Blade. I'd much rather get a Sword Boomerang. And it attacks the enemy three times, so you get three times the benefit from strength. But only plus one. I'm getting the best of stats. Just the armor there to keep it in the deck, but never mind. See if anything will help me. Not really. Just get as much blocks as I can. With this boss, um, he splits 
rid of two enemies that have his current health once he gets below 75 health. And then they split into two enemies that have their its current health and then that gets down to half health. So you always want to sort of get him close to 75 and then hold him. And then do a bunch more if you can. I don't really have many options here, so I'm just trying to smash him to stop him from punching me. I've got quite a bit in the place, I don't really mind the slimes, but what you really do, so might as well get rid of some. Uh, that nearly full box for the turn. So I'm down to 10. It's getting a little hairy. with 14 health now, so that's not too bad. Oh, I just did his bad movement just to say it's good to anything else. You see Clash once again, absolutely useless. and draws my card when I put kid or anything. Oh, sorry, I'm yawning quite a bit. I had a long day at work today. Let's check it out, trying to find a nice uh, dense route. Now, the, the elite paths may be dangerous, but they are generally the best way to go. The more relics you fight, the more relics you get. But the more relics you get, the more chance you've got beating the things at the end of the game. It's another thing about uh, True Grit is if it's the last card in your hand when you play it, you don't have to exile anything, you just gain your own armor. So, very good card. Three hits against these birds will knock them out of the air. And while they're flying, they do take half damage from physical attacks. Any of your ability triggers, such as the fire breathing there, will do full damage still. And your defect orbs will do full damage as well. Like I said, I would say it's poison, you know, and anything that isn't a straight up attack. But uh, if you hit them three times, they get knocked out of the air. And then they'll spend a turn on the ground and be a hit, and then they'll spend a turn. So one time it was one strike actually quite good because it's really picked twice. As you can see, they got a little wing, wing symbol there, showing you that they're really flying with them. So we're getting 10 health, and that's only 5 because of. Still, as I said, very low health a minute ago, and now I'm nearly back up to full. I know I got a big heal from the boss fight, but still. Just getting some max health from said third cards, thanks to the uh, singing bowl up there. Ghost the armor here, I can play Clash, so I should do that really. I thought it'd be a block there, but 24. Old clean, isn't it? Sorry, the Horde Cleat, uh, on turn 2, gives you uh, 
14, I'll probably. So I'm gonna go mark. Turn the next turn and then one, so. I said the killer by one, so we'll just. Okay, so it's an elf back. Every 30, 40, 35 damage. Which I'm not going to do with my iron blade. So, let's just uh, cut our losses. Get up to full. Well, it could have been nice, but that's what I need right now. Okay, so we just want to try and kill one in the back in this fight, because uh, we know you get the X by two for the rest of the combat, which is annoying. Try to flex just some damage to the ground, whatever. I think they'll need to attack if this wins it again. Back, I'm faffing about here trying to work out if we can kill anyone. She answers no. Already picked up my bait, and so it's empty. As much as it does, but I mean, I didn't want to do. Let's get the red mask from that, which uh, makes enemies weak. Probably got two triplets upgraded, I don't need a third, I don't think. Just allows me to make so many more mistakes having two of those. So there's Snacker, so he puts um, Confuse on you, which makes all your cards cost somewhere between zero and three randomly. Every time you draw a card, it will randomize it. Strangely, if you bring it back from the graveyard, it will keep whatever cost it had. Uh, it's very good. Uh, you can get a uh, boss relic, Sneko Eye, that does this effect permanently. Which is um, very good if you're playing expensive cards. So, good if you've got a lot of powers and things. or Flame barriers, uppercuts, that sort of stuff. Just uh, powerful cards that do good effects. Yeah, I, I forgot I had spot weakness as well. I was trying to play the clash. It's it's annoying me. Okay, I'm taking a bit of damage here, but. Grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. So, Spot Weakness is uh, one of my favourite Ironclad cards because I think it's got good flavour. Um, 
you gain three strength if the enemy you target with spot weakness is attacking you this turn. So it's a really good rate because it stays in your deck and you can use it again. But um, I'm always taking disarm. But uh, sometimes it's just it's in your hands, it just doesn't work. But like here, first turn of combat is always going to work. And you've got multiple enemies because something's going to be hitting you. Yeah, 14, 14 armor from Hall of Cleek there, just, just kicked in. Just wanted to sell this boss. Just another his attack. Two small ones. Um, if I hit him with anything, he'll die and give me his energy back anyway. Another disarm, lovely. So in the end, there I didn't even take very much damage. So flames to strength, fire breathing does the. 6 damage river for a status or a curse, which I'm actively putting into my deck, so... Thanks to the extra strength I've been gaining from inflamed spot weakness. Quite a lot of damage with each hit now. Yeah, I might as well pass through get the wings of the deck for fire breathing to trigger. Red needles, like a uh, again four plated armor, um, which if I have if I have it at the end of my turn, I gain that much armor. But every time I take HP damage, I lose one one plated armor. See the disarm, disarm start to do some work in this fight. This guy does a lot of multiple attacks. So I only strength by two, so six damage there. And he's got a, a mechanic where. Ooh, every time he takes health damage, um, he gains armor back equal to that leaf value. And the leaf value increases by one each time, so it starts on three each turn and goes goes up from there. But again, this guy doesn't actually gain any strength, I don't believe. So this arm's just gonna do work. So that was uh, power through. Excellent, nice bit of card drop. And uh, it's very close on our wave I quite like as well, but Battle Trance is the one. Gotta get some thorns in this fight because. Uh, Tough, it takes a little bit to get through it. As I've got the thorns, I can just concentrate on trying to block the damage rather than worrying about damaging them. You always focus the guy on the back in this fight because uh, the guy on the back's got the net 
which he throws at you and stops you from being able to attack for a turn, which you know, is pretty bad. I just see Reaper there just went full hit me. So I'm going to take a bunch of damage here, but it doesn't really matter. I've got another Reaper if I need it. And there it is. So. Might as well use the Reaper to gain back some more health. It's 29 health. It's just stupid amounts. Just kill them both here. Twin strike the other one. Let's go. Full health. There was a half health in the middle of that fight. Full health at the end. Silly. Two on a Thopter helps me for five whenever I, uh, whenever I drink a potion. So we've got another one of those birds. Um, the woman there, uh, she does a variety of quite strong attacks to be fair. Um, and she also puts a debuff on you that means whenever you play a um, non attack card, so for powers and for um, skills, you put a daze into your deck. Which would be good if I didn't have fire breathing to counter back, counteract that. So here comes the curse. It just means that whenever I play anything, I put more daisies in, which is going to help me blow her up. So I'm full blocking her damage. Two daisies for two more damage. So draw cards, lovely, lovely. So I've been 28 damage coming in, I don't think I can do anything about that apart from eat it. Lots of damage, but that was 18 damage at 10. And now she's dead. Yeah, it's, it's, it adds up. I'm only getting one AD either way, I might as well get to the shop. Clash. It's just a bad card. So I've got one artifact which will block a status effect. Effect will just be block. I'll just go through the rest. The uh, explain most of these. The meal ticket does appear. So whenever I enter a shop, which is nice. I only have one Reaper, I might have been tempted by the Exhume there to get it back. But uh, as I've got two, I don't really need to worry about it. Just throwing some damage in the area. It's very smooth, what we just had. No, I've got evolved, so if I draw a status, like a day set, she's going to kill my deck with, then I'll just draw another card, so it shouldn't really affect me at all. So there I've got five cards I can cast. Let's see what I get once I start putting some, uh, some daisies in. So 
so it's still five cards I can cast. Again, five cards I can cast. So this is just just smooths out your draws. Even when you're putting runes and stuff into the deck, you want to always try to mess it up. Talisos could be interesting here, but I've already got the Plated Arbor. So it is four blocks, so it could be eight every turn. Which is nice, but you've got to cast it, it's not a passive thing like what the Yellow Arbor would go. Avocado's got played on itself, so trying to get some early damage into lower that. It's not going too well. With this arm's not going Basically, our key damage dealer at the moment. Reaper's been keeping us alive for most of the rest of our decks since you block cards these days. I suppose it's taken far longer than it has any right to take. Just killed the guy at the back earlier. It's going to be over by now. So I'm just going to do a lot of damage to I'm vulnerable when he's only doing 6 damage It means he's doing, he would only be doing 4 damage Okay, that one It's an extra 50% Strength starting to stack up now Flex potion is interesting now because now I've got the artifact. I can um, use the flex potion to start combat and I will just gain the health, uh, gain the five strength, and I won't lose it at the end of the turn. I think I might use it here, in fact. Yeah, so I've got the five strength. Yeah, I like the uh, artifact. Speed some strength, punch the guys in the face. As you can see, most of these fights are pairing out the same, so I gain some block while I uh, make some power, uh, some small weaknesses, and then uh, hit the enemy for a bunch of uh, bunch of damage in one turn, mostly. Keep looking at the Reaper, it's like, oh, I'm already on full health. I thought things went worse than this, but no. Need 
five block and get back on one card. Got no AoE damage. Probably just hit the boss with everything and win though. That's not enough to kill him. So the first time I take damage, I don't. Corruption is tempting. Very tempting. It's better when you've got Dead Branch and or, uh, Dark Embrace, which means whenever you exhaust a card, you draw a card. It's just a lot of my cards. My defensive cards have got exhaust anyway, like the Bart uh, Disarms. I think that's it actually, but still, some of them do. And I've got the Seeding, the seed, the seeding Red exhaust as well. Uh, saving the disarms for after I've um, got rid of the enemy's artifact charges. Just trying to make sure I've got enough block because uh, this enemy will. He summons two, those two beaners, and as you can see, they um, will on their first turn steal a card from him, and then they'll alternate between attacking and putting block on the boss. The boss itself. Um, does some small attacks, some power ups, and once every now and then he'll do a really, really powerful laser attack. Which uh, is what I want to try and save my buffer charge for. Because uh, if I can full block every turn until that comes around, then uh, I don't have to worry about trying to block for like 60 or whatever it might be. Got my uh, only 20 block here. I've got 22, so that's enough. Hopefully not a lot's attacking me. I'll just play a bit of true grit and then second wind. All right. Good power either way, I suppose. We'll get 56 damage coming in, so I just need to kill the guy at the back. And I won't take any damage this turn. Again, minor pause for the top of the vape, I think. It's a problem with this one hand gaming, so I just don't put the vape down, so. It runs out of juice two or three times a run. Perverted. Now I just got to worry about trying to kill him. Body slam me, and when, when you don't have your block, you'll do damage equal to your strength. So it's just a zero cost attack. The upgraded ones. Very rare that I won't take an upgraded body slam. It's free attacks are very nice. Well, see, the body stabs could do quite a lot of damage. It's not only might be attacked for 30, I've got some good block cards in hand as well. Seven out of the body stand at the moment. There he is, very nice. Angus is another card that's uh, very good in these decks where you're putting um, lots of statuses in there. So uh, you keep a good balance. So 
in the use of guards and statuses. So we've gained a lot of block guards since the start of the run, so jump along seems like a good choice here. Green fire is also a very good choice, but I kind of like having all the extra statuses in the deck, but that would be a good way of getting rid of them. Pyramids, very strong. I don't think I've ever taken that cube. I can't even tell you what it does. I've taken the, uh, the wound thing. It puts two wounds in my deck and start combat, which is actually quite good for me. There's a lot of synergies with those. And um, it gives me an extra energy, which is very nice. That's every turn. It's very useful. So, going into Act 3 here, we've got the two spike rods at the front. Into a buff that increases the amount of return damage they do, and they occasionally do attacks, but that's that's much rarer. And you know, the wax just dazes into the axe, which you know, and you might do attacks as well, but mostly he just dazes you. So I'm just going to kill him while I uh, work out how I'm going to deal with the two guys with thorns. I'm working out and I can do some damage this turn and the thorns is pretty low so I might as well just kill the guy at the back That's way of doing damage to them, but they can't hit me back for. So as I'm gaining four buff every turn, that's that's five damage from there. Got a fire breathing that will also do some damage. If he's not attacking me, I don't need to worry too much. Trench seems like a good card. Yeah. Probably find how excellent the the powers I've got. Whenever you play a power random card of your hand, it becomes zero cost until the end of turn with a combat, I'm not sure. End of turn, I think. Just got good bands like this. Just do it. I'm not good anyway, but I'll play everything out and I've still got mana left over, which is nice. Soul Link, which means that unless they're all dead, they come back to life. So that guy I've just killed him, and I spent the turn thinking, and they turn out, and they come back. So I'm just trying to get some uh, damage buffs in, so my Reapers, Cleaves, and Thumb Cups will kill them all. I think they only come back with half health when they come back, so it's not too bad. Yeah, it is really bad. It is worth killing them. Because they will um, to not be attacking you while they're resurrecting themselves and they've got their turns off.
Okay. Reset this deck. Don't do a lot of damage to myself, but just uh, can block the map sometimes. See, these guys, they do damage and statuses, and they also ramp their attack by 4. I think it is, and then they get increased by 3 every turn, something like that. And they, they get strong quite quickly to eat the map fast. Let's just increase my three every turn. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, reduce the cost to zero thing only happens to cards that have cost higher, greater than zero. So yeah. it will always hit something that's relevant. Here. So that is the low damage quite significantly. Don't need that much block, but I don't want to have too many of those cards in my deck. Not without a ball cap. Burnsy for deck, yeah, I forgot they do that. Sure, okay, not too bad for me because it's just more damage. I get the second win to remove him off. So I need to block, kill the enemy, which seems nice. Gallopers, just done. Getting enough blocks it is. Now I don't even lose it all at the end of the turn, so potentially just stack, stack block to oblivion. These were all enemies you've seen before. The guy in the back has uh, gains a large amount of armor every turn, and he has got um, barricades, so you're not losing the end of his turn. And occasionally he'll slap you, but he has very low health. So the defect and uh, the silent have an easy time with him because the uh, defect can hit him with Melter, and it'll just take off all his armor and hit him for 10. So that almost kills him in one hit, and the silent, the poison damage goes straight to health and draws armor completely. So, but the problem with it is he has got uh, three artifacts, so it might take a minute to get the poison damage on him. But yeah, he's the one enemy in the game that makes it worth picking up a deep, picking up a belter because it's uh, it's just nice having this. Uh, there are other enemies where it's good, but in this fight, it's just just nice to fight. And that guy turns up in Act 2 and Act 3, so... Back to, uh, just waiting for these guys to get killed by other means. Actually killed them by defending myself. I 
we end up very good finally. Yeah. It's been doing a lot on the lift though, so it needs it. This guy's a interesting enemy. He um, alternates between being invulnerable one turn and uh, vulnerable the next. So he can only take one damage from any attack or anything that does damage in this turn. But he also does quite a, quite hefty chunks of damage. But he does the damage when he when you need to block. He's, he's, what he's doing, he's, yeah, so we've got block, block heavy one turn and then attack him the next turn. That's one damage. In fact, I'm not losing a lot of block each turn. I've still got 28 left over from last turn. So it just means that I don't have to worry about how much block I'm making. If I can make a ton of block, it might as well do it. So he's going to be useful. Mm -hmm. I started to gain any block from Malak's had some left over from last turn. That's fancy finish. Well, we'll just have to go on then, if you insist. They're not the most flashy cards, but uh, they get the job done. This fairly is, but it just highlights how slow this deck is and, and actually boring it is. This guy does, uh, he spends the first few turns not doing a lot, and then he starts, this is in his time, or something like that. And then he starts just hitting you 50 damage a turn, every turn. I think it's like 50, 45, 60, just slightly goes up. But we've got to pause here. Thought I'd edit all these out. Oh no! Well, need to go make a cup of tea. Go, go ahead, do that now. Hopefully, it won't be here for long. Hang on a minute. I can do this. There we go. With the power of editing, I can take out some of that for you. Um, I don't want to take any more than that because uh, I'd already started speaking over it. So. So I've edited it where I could. Sorry for the interruption. We now resume your regular programming. Yeah, as I was saying, this uh, this fight here, I'm not doing a lot of damage to the guy at all. So you can see his counter is at three. Disarm really doesn't do a lot. But let's reduce it by a lot when he's hitting type 50. About 520 health is a lot of health to try and get through. Pretty slow at doing damage. He's pretty good at staying alive, though. So it's 26 coming in. Again, he's not that fine. That was 30. So as you can see, it's starting to ramp up.
to my deck. I don't put exactly the right amount of block. Obviously plan that. I, I just didn't break the top of my deck. See now I start doing the beating. So that one gets completely negated. Which is my buffer. Still got 163 damage to go. It's not going very quickly. 30 damage turn is really slow for this stage of the game. So you have a body stand but with no real block cards to go with it. I'm playing everything out but it's just not doing a lot. 49 damage, can I get that in one turn? 39 now. Got him. Yeah, flower, lovely. Nothing here I want. And I'm just looking at this, I, I don't want any of those things. So I'll just take the loss of max HP up. Just hit 100. Most games are you hovering around 70, so. This doesn't really do anything for me. I don't have that many expensive cards. So I've got this guy again. This guy's much easier than the head. He's got less than half the health. And he spreads his damage out quite a bit. The iron waves are doing 10 damage and gaining, or doing 15 damage and gaining 5 block now, which is uh, quite nice. So it's nice showing the, the juggernaut turning all your block cards into pseudo damage cards, especially when I'm really struggling with damage. Too much to me because of the disarms and weaken and so on. He's actually hitting me for nothing. Okay. Still attacking me, just what the weakness works. Now we can take damage. I should be able to kill him this turn. Attack will do it. Took a while to realize how low he was. There's Dark Embrace. Goes very well with the starter deck I've built. I'm just missing the corruption and the feel no pain to make the deck just silly. An offering would be nice, but yeah, there's a feel no pain as well. Ah. There we go, get that in the deck. I uh, will pick the offering again because if you see a card you don't want and just click on a card you know that isn't that. Because if you get a pair it goes in your deck whether you want it or not. And he evolves to that one to draw extra cards. Let's go. Final fight. Donu Deku. Fun fact, you can get an achievement for using feed, which is an ironclad card. But uh, uh, I don't think I've seen either of the runs I've done yet. But it does, um, uh, if you 
kill an enemy with it, you gain extra max health. If you use feed as a killing blow on Donut, you get an achievement for it. Eating with Donut, I suppose. But yeah, they, they alternate. One of them will always be attacking, the other one will always be doing their buff. Uh, Donut buffs strength, and Deku buffs armor. So I'd like to kill Donu first, but I think I'm gonna just do damage to both of this one. By Reaper. I'm just get those potions out of the way because I'll only forget them otherwise. Start to see as I'm playing the uh, out these powers. So I think I've got the evolve down now. I'll put the dark embrace down. Just, just when I draw cards, I draw a whole bunch. Now the fire breathing, so now they're going to do their damage. a hell of a lot of damage, I feel no pain. I exhaust cards I gain block. So I'll sign games with block, draw some cards. And they were status cards, so they did damage. In the turn, Days gets exhausted. I draw a card, it does some damage, gives me some block. You see all these effects just rolling into each other. So if I gain block, I do damage. But if I draw a card, if it's status, it does damage. But if I exhaust a card, I gain, I gain block. If I draw a card, I do damage. So I'm going to end turn here, and that will be the end of the game. These bases go off. Kind of draw cards, you blow up. <laughs> it's just silly. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. I'll uh, catch you next time. I'll, I'll wait till the score screen. That's why I want to see that. There you go, 30 04.